Welcome to a bonus live edition of Locked On Senators featuring our Sens insider, The Martian. You can follow him on Twitter, at Laleem's Martian. And this one, it's it's not a happy show. Like, let's be honest. We never cheer for someone to lose their jobs. But today, Pierre Dorian has resigned as Senators general manager after more than seven years as GM and more than 17 years as a member of the organization. Steve Steos has been named interim GM. A search for a G- general manager will not have a timeline. I'm Ross Levitan. Martian, what is going on, my friend? Well, it's been a busy day, Ross, as you can probably imagine. Um, I think, obviously, as soon as we knew that there was going to be a punishment for the Dadanov situation, um, which is also something that came out today, by the way. I know this story on news is kind of taking up all the headlines now, but uh, after losing a first round pick for essentially negligence, um, and that's something that we knew was coming based on, you know, the reports that we were seeing, uh, you know, earlier last week, you know, at the end of last week, uh, I caught wind of that one. Um, you caught wind of that one. And then uh, over the weekend, you know, that was confirmed by Elliot Friedman that, you know, there was going to be some sort of, sort of punishment to the Sens. Uh, for that Evgeny Dadanov trade situation where uh, they didn't disclose the no trade list to the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, And as soon as, you know, you hear something like that and a mistake that large, um, you know, amongst the GMs and, you know, in in the Senators brass, you just have to assume that there was going to be repercussions for that. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened today. Yeah. It didn't take long. I mean, it was, it was pretty immediate. I think they, they found out what the punishment was going to be, you know, last week. I, I'm pretty sure is when they kind of knew that was going to happen. And uh, I think that at that point, the decision had been made, um, which is why, you know, it took so long. Uh, I mean, why it was, you know, it didn't take long for the leaks to start happening um, amongst the, the organization. And that was with two other organizations as well that Michael Anlauer made clear were not happy and wanted, quote, a pound of flesh for what happened as uh the league was embarrassed by the fact that Evgeny Dadanov was sent to Anaheim despite being on his no trade list. That no trade list was not communicated from the Ottawa Senators at the time of a trade that happened like 18 months ago. So I get Anlauer's frustration. I thought it was pretty refreshing to hear him just straight up say he doesn't understand what's going on here and um, nor do I from that standpoint. But the first question was asked by Bruce Garriock and it was simple. Was this the final straw. And he said, that's a great way to put it because it's not this happened and okay, he's got to lose his job. And I know the term is resigned. I know on the thumbnail, I put fired. Let's meet in the middle. It's somewhere in between. I don't think if Pierre Dorian didn't see the writing on the wall, he would have been happy to go. He believes in this team. He's locked up a lot of the core. If this core has success, there will be some stick taps for Pierre Dorian. But on a day-to-day level, it just felt like there was too much that was going on behind the scenes that just didn't didn't make sense. It didn't align with the the best in class mantra that this ownership group has, that this uh, president of hockey operations has. I think he wants to keep things a little bit tighter and a little bit more professional, for lack of a better term. I think that there was um, there was a comment made saying we put ourselves in a bit of a pickle with this uh, with this move with the Shane Pinto thing, and like I thought, Anlar nailed it right off the bat, and I want you to pick up with that saying like. Hey, the first 30 days was awesome as as the owner of this team. But then in the last 10, I've had two phone calls from the league that kind of blindsided and brought him back down to reality. First Shane Pinto, 41 games. And then the fact that you're losing a first round pick. Yeah, and this is classic Ottawa Senators of old, hopefully. Uh, this kind of debacle, I think, is is something that they need to get a hold of rather quickly. And and no news is going to be good news for the Ottawa Senators going forward throughout this season and, and into the future beyond that. Because, I mean, it, it, we've been Sens fans for a very long time, Ross, and it's crazy how used we are to be, you know, seeing the Sens be a negative headline. Like a long time. Almost, almost like, I mean, lately it's been every week, but, um, you know, over the course of the last few years, it's like, Every six months, there's some big story, and it has to do either with the Eugene Melnick stuff or, you know, something Pierre Dorian says or, or some sort of mistake that's made by somebody in the organization that leads to some sort of headline. And I think you hit the nail on the head when you use the word professionalism. Um, that's something where, you know, 
other fans can give us a hard time for being a, a, a Mickey Mouse organization because look at the track record. Like, it's true. There's been so many times where we're the laughing stock of the league because somebody in the organization screwed up. It's not pretty. And it's not fun to deal with as a fan. We just want to watch this hockey team and watch them win. That's all I want to do. And the Senators got back in the win column. This one, though, was a well thought out. Let's put it that way. Like, this wasn't something that came overnight. Uh, however, it didn't seem like it was premeditated from the time that Steve Steos came in because another quote that I found interesting from Michael Ann Lauer was saying he liked the idea of this two headed monster, having a GM and a president of hockey operations collaborating and working together, the GM for the day to day operations and the president of hockey operations laying the foundation for the long-term stability of the organization. So how long do you think it'll be before Steve Steos hires a general manager? Uh, I don't think it will be too long. I think they're obviously going to, you said it, they they want that two-headed monster. So they're going to probably begin their hunt right now. I think that's probably got to be one of uh, Steve Steos' top priorities, you know, before the end of the new year. Uh, I would guess that if we're going to get a new GM this season, which I, I expect we will, it'll pro it'll probably be around Christmas or New Year's kind of area um, where they have the time to, you know, evaluate what they have and what they need and the type of person that they want to bring in. Um, and then, and I think we'll have a new GM by then. Um, I know everybody's next question is probably going to be, you know, DJ Smith. Um, I think that it's pretty obvious that they're going to give him his leash to uh, let this team perform. Sounds like they still have, you know, the vote of confidence towards him as far as being the head coach of the team. So um, I would expect, you know, everybody's saying that 20 game mark is kind of that reevaluation, uh, you know, period. Um, I would expect at least that 20 game period before we hear any DJ Smith chatter. And if the team's winning, um, that chatter will go away entirely. And I think Steve Steos hit the nail on the head when he was asked that question. The players, and I agree with this, and you can you can say what you want about maybe him not being hard enough on players and keeping them accountable. But from the other way around, like these players still like as a whole work hard. Like how many nights? And we remember the the Craig Hartsburg a team like like back in the day the Corey Clouston teams like there's been bad coaches for this organization in the past and it's been clear even Paul McClain I know he started off strong but at the end Paul McClain was just you know he'd run out his time in Ottawa we've seen the team quit on different coaches the Senators haven't quit on DJ Smith I think it's more you can you can pick apart the X's and O's of DJ Smith but I bet you Steve Steos is saying hey we can put other people Daniel Alfredson one of them and others we can put people around dj that can help with the x's and o's and all that i feel like that with the gm they're making the decision the buck stops here so i understand if if you don't have confidence at, at all you have to move on but when it comes to the head coach i think you can insulate him with the proper support staff and then if it still doesn't work then you you know you you figured it out that the common denominator whereas i think now he's had what his same two assistants forever like, I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw, you know, a new assistant coach come in and then, you know, maybe go from there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it could, it could happen, right? Where, you know, if they do feel like it's a structural thing and not an, an effort thing, then maybe that's a change that they do need to make. But I don't know. I feel like they're just going to want a little bit of a quiet period here for themselves so they don't have to keep doing uh, press conferences, uh, you know, once every two weeks or, or even more frequently than that. And Lauer said it at the end. He's like, uh, right before the stream cut off, he's like, hopefully I don't have to see you guys for a little while. Oh, he did say that. I missed that part. I, uh, I had to take the dog out before he jumped on here, so I just missed the very end there. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's the way they're thinking. They're just like, we need to put a stop to all these headlines around this team. We just need to focus on the hockey side of things because that's that's why Michael and Lauer bought the team. And, by the way, thank God he's a hockey guy through and through while all this stuff is going on because he knows how to kind of react and damage control these type of headlines. Can you imagine Ryan Reynolds getting up there and trying to deal with this <laughs> or Snoop Dogg for that matter? Like, man, it would be a total sideshow. Um, so I'm really glad we ended up with who we did as the owner of this team. God, I'm, I'm dying even just thinking about that. Now, some of you may be asking, well, there were two people at the Sens press conference. There's two people on this stream. Where is Pilsy? Right? Like a lot of people are going to be asking that, Martian. Where's Pilsy? Did Pilsy resign from Locked On Senators? Did Pilsy resign? And the answer is no. We got this from Pilsy. Pilsy's out the farm today. Rocking the Send Central hoodie, though. He looks sharp as ever, doesn't he? 
Yeah, I mean, Pillsy's always a great looking guy. So look at him in that. That's that's a hard working man right there. So we we can't give him too much of a hard time. I can farm and I can podcast, but I can't do both at the same time. <laughs> Classic Pills. I love it. So uh, Pillsy is still on board, but obviously uh, we're trying to laugh through the Ottawa Senators news of the day. A man lost his job and hasn't been replaced for sure just yet. And Eric, I'm in no place to be disclosing how many chickens pills he has. He's going to make you guys suffer for this one. Ask him on the postcast after dark. That's when he'll cut he'll cut that, that off for you guys. But we got plenty more to get to on this one. We're going to speculate on who some GM candidates could be. We're going to look back on the Pierre Dorian era as general manager. Seven plus years. There's been good, bad, ugly. I think the one thing you can say about Pierre Dorian is this man's not afraid to take a swing. He took a lot of them. He struck out. And he hit grand slams. Now, did he close his eyes to hit a few of those grand slams? Maybe. But hey, they all count. It's how, how, Not how, it's how many. So with all that said, a lot of people asking me to get your reaction to Ann Lauer saying, wasn't so happy how this one leaked out to the streets. Yeah, I mean, he didn't uh, directly reference the streets, thank goodness. Uh, but I think, you know, there's obviously a, a bit of a... Uh, I don't want to say it's an issue for, I mean, it's beneficial for me as a band, but like, but like when things leak, people hear things around the CTC, you know, people who, I don't know if it's people who work there. I don't know if it's people who um, know somebody who works there. I don't know who these people are a lot of the time. Sometimes, you know, you got to vet them a little bit more than others. Um, but, you know, it's pretty clear that uh, the streets really don't miss and people haven't really fed me bad info yet. Like I, I'm, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm getting it from people who are connected enough that I trust to put it on my account. Um, I wouldn't just make something up for the fun of it. Uh, it's obvious that, you know, there's people out there who uh, are, you know, friends of the streets and I am merely a conduit. You know, if they want to get that news out there, uh, I'm the man. So I'll get that out for anyone. Um, but at the same time, uh, you got to be careful with what you're putting out there because um, you don't want to be wrong. Um, but for now, we're, we're, we're doing okay. You especially don't want to be wrong when you're talking about another man's job. And we know that all too well. People who are longtime listeners of LOSP right, might remember the making sense of the sense days when yours truly had the Guy Boucher firing first simply because we saw him being escorted out of the of the, uh, of the the arena. So we, uh, we said, don't be surprised if Guy Boucher is fired today. And now uh, six years later, we passed the buck to Martian. And I like the craziest part is that even all the way back then. And it, it feels wild bringing up something from over six years ago. Like Pierre Dorian was the general manager for that day. Like it, it has been a long time since he's been in the organization. Martian, it's, it's a lot to ask you to summarize, right? It's been a pandemic. It's been 545 regular season games. It's been one memorable playoff run. How will you look back on the Pierre Dorian tenure in Ottawa? It's a really tough question, Ross, because I think, you know, as a person, I, I feel like Pierre Dorian was probably one of the better guys in the NHL you could ever ask to have a beer with. I feel like he's got kind of maybe a little bit of like loose lips. He'll tell you a good story or two. Um, he's like he's a regular great guy from Ottawa who uh, happened to be a GM of a hockey team and a local um, team, too. Hey, local guy. I think like, you know, for, for him, it was his dream job. Um, so I, I think there's definitely a lot of trades you can look at and say, oh, that one didn't really turn out in his favor. But on the flip side, I think just as many of those trades, if not more, actually panned out for the better for him and for the team. Um, I would have never thought that the Evgeny Dadanov one was the one that was going to make him, you know, at the end of it, lose his, lose his job. I think some people were trying to dunk on me today. Like, I, I think after that trade, my comment was Dorian kind of nice with it, with that after that trade. Um, but obviously two years hindsight is a, is a hell of a drug. Um, but with, with, with Dorian overall summary for me would be like, it was a rebuild. Like the team wasn't going to win a lot of games. Everybody knew that from the start. And if you look at the the final, you know, if you want to say the rebuilds over and the, which I believe it is and the, and the, you know, the roster that they're currently rocking right now and the contracts those players are on. Mission accomplished. Like you did, you did complete that rebuild and it was a long process, but you do got kind of got to give them a lot of credit for what they ended up with here. And he really set up whoever comes next with 
you know, some great core pieces to move forward with. So for me, um, I give Pierre two thumbs up for his, uh, for his efforts, but obviously there was some uh, lack of, of professionalism that ultimately ended up costing him. I think, um, you know, sometimes he was a little bit too candid in the media. That's something that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way because you don't see a lot of um, GMs making jokes at the podium and, and, you know, even laughing at their own jokes or trying to be funny. Um, but I think that just goes back to what I was saying earlier about him being just, you know, kind of almost like too regular of a guy. Like he was very like just candid and honest and, and has a sense of humor and, you know, wants to be well liked. So um, I can't really fault him too much for that. But when you look at who they currently have here with it, with Ann Lauer and, and Steos and whoever they bring in next, you can expect none of that BS, right? It's going to be all business all the time, very direct, very straightforward. And, uh, you know, no quotable um, comments in the media that are going to let the fans go nuts and, and let them meme him up, like throwing a cup up in the box suite. Like, like, remember that? And then like all these different little things that, you know, you can look at and say, like, that's maybe not something that you should do at work if you're a, you know, a, a general manager of an NHL hockey team, which is the highest, highest of levels of, of ho- in the hockey world and even in the sporting world. Right. So. Um, for me, it was ultimately the, the lack of professionalism um, is what cost him. But I think on paper for the hockey moves, he did well. If you don't look at um, all you know, the bad ones, that, well, the penalty that they just ended up taking a first round pick is, is no joke, right? There are a lot of bad ones, but there were a lot of good ones. This one here uh, was just straight up uh, like, I mean, the, the word they're using is negligence and, and, being negligent isn't doing something by accident. It's purposefully, you know, leaving something out to almost mislead someone where it was pretty obvious that Vegas asked them for if there was a no trade list. And the answer was no. And obviously that's not the facts. You know, the fact is there was a no trade list and obviously Ottawa knew about it. So um, for them to withhold that information, of course, that's going to be a fireable offense. And to be honest, that's the kind of thing that, deserves to be punished pretty strong handedly. So, and I don't think I'm breaking any news by saying that uh, let's, let's just say he, he might not have been the most respected among players as a GM. And I can only imagine that maybe some agents as well, where it's just kind of like, yeah, I, I mean, he has this easy goingness about him. He's been on our show three times and I would love to have him back on. If he wants to come on and say his side of the story by all means. So if you, if anyone in the chat is in Orleans, or can get to Navin Arena in the next week and can get us Pierre Dorian. We're happy to have a conversation with him, hear his side of the story. 